new life can take on a great variety of appearances. But no matter what it looks like, new life brings new challenges, possibilities, and opportunities. And new life often can only take place because something else has, willingly or not, made way for it. Every year we see ice and snow make way for the fragile foliage of spring, and the public spaces of our towns come alive with people anxious to stretch their legs in the sunshine after a long, isolating, dark winter. Soon enough, these joyful signs will become yard work and summer traffic, and once again, we will crave a change. But these cyclical patterns are a poor example of the excitement and even the danger of new life, precisely because they are so predictable. The new life that Jesus gives to Lazarus in today's gospel is far more instructive. There was nothing predictable about it. There was nothing predictable about it before, during, or after the miracle. Before, Martha expressed tremendous faith in Jesus, saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Her faith is real and relatable because it is mixed with despair, disappointment, anger, and fear. That shows us just how strong her faith is that it can exist and find expression in a hostile environment. Compare that to Thomas's faith. He who said, let us also go, that we may die with him. He said this to his fellow disciples. We believe in and worship God, not as an insurance policy, nor as a quid pro quo, but because being in relationship with God is part of being aware of and responsive to reality. In a word, being alive. As he tends to do, Thomas points out an uncomfortable truth about life. Upsetting the status quo can lead to unfortunate consequences. But ultimately, we have to make the choice between fear and life. And so, we should pray that we follow Thomas's example of acknowledging the risks and embracing the possibilities of new life despite them. That's exactly what we will be doing this Sunday with the long-anticipated return of organized children's ministry here at St. John's during the 1030 service. I have tremendous faith, hope, and confidence in our new director of youth ministry, Jay DePrima, even as I recognize that any new approach to this delicate yet vital area of ministry carries risk. I wrote this sermon having no idea how many children will be in Sunday school today, nor how many volunteers will answer the call to support Jay in his ministry, nor how his lively approach and big ideas will be received. Like Thomas, like this congregation, I looked those risks square in the face and chose to press ahead. Like Martha, I have faith that a gifted man returning to our community will take an empty space and fill it with new life, a gift that only ever comes from the presence of God. Okay, maybe that was a little over the top. Jay is excellent all around, but he will be the first to tell you he is not Jesus. By the same token, I don't know Alan Gates, but I have every reason to expect he would also deny being the Son of God. Alan Gates, if you haven't heard, was elected yesterday to become the next Bishop of Massachusetts. There are still a few formalities standing between him and the pointy hat, but his future is as clear as anyone's can be. In all the hubbub leading up to his election, all the blunt and cynical observations and speculation. I never heard a bad word about him, and let me tell you, that is almost unheard of with bishops and bishop candidates. I have tremendous faith, 
hope and confidence in Father Gates that he will lead our diocese, both as a visionary and as a skilled leader of daily affairs. Our diocese is no tomb, but a community already brimming with vigorous life. Although, as Mark, Carolyn, and I were leaving the cathedral after sitting through hours of delay and confusion caused by an amateurish vote-counting blunder, I gained new appreciation for Lazarus's experience. We hadn't been rotting in a tomb for four days, but we were still grateful that God finally led us out into the living world again, filled with new hope and new life. I hope and pray that you share in that feeling. Jesus is doing wonderful new things in our diocese, in our parish, and in every heart that welcomes him in. The fruits of new life are unmistakable, and their revelation draws new faith. The tale of the raising of Lazarus drew some to believe in Jesus, and the walking, talking, eating, and drinking face of Lazarus drew many more to accept the truth that Jesus is Lord, the long-awaited giver of life. Just so, some will be drawn closer to Jesus by the news of what he is doing in us, in our parish, and in our diocese, but far more will be drawn to him by seeing the many and diverse good fruits that his new life produces. The Spirit of Christ is within each of us, the inexhaustible source of life. Follow him, see the wonders he will do, and share them with a world that longs for the gift of new life. Amen.